So there's a memo to NFL teams, and it's about some third-party dude who claims to represent Lamar Jackson, but doesn't represent Lamar Jackson. All right? It's a, this is the whole thing is very, very weird. Um, I think I can sum it up for you in short order, but let's kind of first tell you the story a little bit, right? So, um, the Lamar Jackson offseason saga, this AP story reports, took another unexpected turn with the distribution of a league wide memo. And it deals with the involvement of a business partner of fitness equipment named Ken Francis. On Thursday, the NFL sent out a memo to all clubs notifying them that a person not certified by the NFLPA might be attempting to persuade a team, team personnel, to enter into contract negotiations with Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens quarterback who's received the non-exclusive franchise tag. Under league rules, teams can speak only with Jackson because he doesn't have an agent. According to the memo obtained by ESPN's Adam Schefter, the NFLPA informed the league that Francis, who is not a certified agent with the Players Union, might be contacting teams regarding Jackson. The memo, which again distributed to all 32 teams, says an uncertified person, Mr. Francis, is prohibited from negotiating offer sheets or player contracts or discussing potential trades on behalf of any NFL player or any prospective player or assisting in or advising with respect to such negotiations. Francis told ESPN's J- Jeremy Fowler, I don't speak for Lamar. Lamar also denied that tweeting, stop lying, that man never tried to negotiate for me. So what's taking place here? I think we can all kind of see through all the smoke and realize that Lamar's not getting, you know, you got all these reports that teams aren't interested. And Lamar's trying to figure out, okay, well, is it not interested because of you think I want $250 million guaranteed for five years or you're not interested because you're not interested? And like, hey, man, we can work out a deal here. Tell me what you're thinking. Do you know what would be really, really, a, a really good uh, person to negotiate, to, to do, to have that conversation? An agent. An agent. But I'm going to take something that Charles Barkley said last night. And I'm going to use it. Okay. And I'm going to use it to tell you why Lamar Jackson doesn't have an agent. Because what Charles Barkley was commenting on last night has nothing to do with agents. But it has everything to do with the perception that can be created. This is Charles Barkley last night. And they were coming off of an interview with, the uh, I think it's Charlie Baker, who's the new, he used to be uh, in the house, I believe. And now he's the new head of the NCA. And he said, hey, look, man, we're going to try and get everybody together. But if not, we're going to try and get Congress to push on on legislating with this NIL stuff because there are state laws in place that can hold things back. And we want to, you know, use. And the reason that he was hired is there's there's exemptions that the NCA needs to have through Congress. Otherwise, everybody's going to get taxed and the current system is going to go. But here was Charles Barkley's comments coming off that interview. I think it's incumbent on the NCAA to also develop a program that we believe we could implement uh, if, the, if the feds can't actually put something together on their own. The only problem with it is um, if the feds do it, all 50 states comply. If we do it, we have to perhaps nudge some states and their collegiate programs into participating because they may have state laws that don't require that they play. Chuck, you're shaking your head. <laughs> Did he say we're going to ask the politicians to help us? See, that that pisses me off already. Our politicians are awful people. As I talked to Clark earlier, because I asked him about y'all conversation, I would ask to go to people who actually care about basketball, not looking at it just themselves. I would put a committee together. I would love for Clark to be on the committee, get some coaches, get some players, and let's try to work this thing out. We can't ask these politicians nothing. Those people are awful people. Democrats and Republicans, they're all crooks. Listen, Charles is wrong. I, I know this is going to strike you as you're like, oh, you're hating on Charles Barkley because no, he's not. I like Charles and Charles would sit down and I'd text him. We'll have a conversation about this on air. But he knows what he said is to be wrong. Not every politician's a crook. Not every college politician's a bad actor. They're just not. And by the way, 
the reality of it, as Charlie Baker pointed out, is the reality is you can't just have this legislation and agreement without Congress's help because each state has their own individual laws. And so some of this stuff doesn't hold up unless you get the help of Congress, who makes a uniform policy that opens things up. We, 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 we've created this narrative that every, what Charles said is, I'm sure, getting millions of likes. They're all crooks. No, they're not. They're not all crooks. They're not all, that's terrible to say. And I say that because if I say college basketball coach, you'll think, well, there's something nefarious to it, right? It's like a used car salesman. The truth is most college basketball coaches are really good dudes, guys that played, love the game, love kids, love being around colleges, love it all, right? It's, it, it'd be the same thing if you stereotype, look at John Morant. That's how all young NBA players are, right? You know, they get some money. They got, you know, they're going out with their friends, guns everywhere, drinks everywhere, partying every night, don't care about anybody or anything. That's not the way it is. It's not close to the way it is. We're stereotyping all politicians. And we do the same thing with agents. NFL agent. Ugh. 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 Most NFL agents are... One, lawyers. Oh, he said, oh, lawyers. Okay. This is what we do with every every profession. We can create some um, teachers. Oh, you're a teacher. Okay. Because you see some video of a teacher losing their stuff with a student and all these other crazy stories about young, attractive teachers sleeping with, like, you. if you take one story about a 1%, you're going to create some narrative. That's awful what Charles, Char, Charles Barkley said. And look, on some level, Congress, some levels they've earned it, but the reality is not everybody cheats on taxes. Most people pay them. Not every young basketball, football player, actually most of them, do the right thing. And I would guess that a good, healthy number of politicians are there for a good reason and actually try and help people. And oh yeah, by the way, none of this is getting done unless you got Congress's help. You could sit here and go, bureaucracy, red tape, whatever, like there's plenty of different instances where things were at a stalemate and Congress had to step in and fix it. It's, it's not the best solution, but it, it is the end-all, be-all defining solution. Once they rule on it, it's over. But, you know, you got to go through more steps to get back in front of them. And I think what Lamar, I think what Lamar Jackson's guilty of is just falling into the all. Isn't it? Well, the NFL teams are always out to get you. Oh, NFL owners, you know. Oh, agents are like, do you got some dude as your business partner calling cold calling teams trying to get a deal? Do you have any idea how unprofessional and desperate that looks? And and to anyone who says, well, that means you think Lamar's not smart. No, it doesn't. Like I have agents, I've had agents and it, it, there are times which in my profession, you're supposed to pay 10% to an agent. You're sitting there going like, man, I'm really going to pay that guy 10%. What's he been doing? But try and work without one. Go for it. Fix your own car. Do your own taxes. Repaint your own house. Okay. Mow your own lawn. And I know, I know some of you are like, well, I'm a Renaissance man. I do all this stuff myself. Okay. You can, I'm smart enough to know what I don't know. You know, I'll give you a quick example. I don't know a ton about cars. I know about cars, right? I can tell you about make, model, you know, some of the values, what, what values hold, what don't, what I like to drive, the differences in them, you know, what feels like what's built better. Again, a lot of this is based upon reading, talking to people in the industry. I can change my own oil. I can change a tire. If I get a, if I get a flat tire, on the 405 and I pull over to the side and I have a jack and I have a spare. Am I changing my own tire? Hell no. Do you know why? One, I don't want to screw it up. But most importantly, I don't want to get hit by somebody else. So I pay whatever I pay a year for AAA and they come. And if I get a flat tire last night, my daughter, she has a car. She's 16. It was smoking. And so I said, what does the smoke smell like? She's like, well, it kind of has a sweet smell. It's like, oh, that's coolant. That's not oil. You're leaking coolant. So, uh, you know, I, Put coolant in myself, but it continued to smoke. 
So I took it to the dealership and they're like, yeah, you got a leak in the valve. You nailed what it was, but you don't know how to fix it. And you can't fix it without our help. Of course. There are things you can do in this world by yourself. No question. This is not one of them. You wouldn't represent yourself in a capital murder trial, would you? Of course not. Why? Because you want a professional. I mean, Lamar Jackson, and you're going to sign a deal somewhere north of $150 million guaranteed. I kind of want a professional doing that deal. Not some business partner who sells a wannabe shake weight to the, to the to public. Like all of these wounds of Lamar Jackson, they're self-inflicted. He fell in the draft because no one could get a hold of him for workouts because his mom was handling that. This deal should have been done. He should have had money in the bank 12 months ago. Didn't because he didn't have an agent to get the deal done. And you could say it wouldn't have been a better deal. You're right. Maybe it wouldn't have. Okay. But he would have all that money in the bank, in escrow, and could be living on any of the interest, and it could be earning more money for him. But man, when you have a league-wide memo, when you, this, this just looks like a dude who has no idea what he's doing. You had your business partner call NFL teams. Well, he didn't negotiate for me. Doesn't matter, bud. Do you know how that looks?